Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the founder and CEO of 8th Bridge, Wade Gurton. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We've got a really exciting event planned for you. Uh, today, we're releasing Graphite. And uh, Graphite is a uh, brand new social commerce platform that we've been working on for quite a while. Uh, Graphite is the first social commerce platform uh, to be built from the ground up to integrate with your existing channels and your existing systems. Uh, I, th I think it's the most innovative thing that's happened within social commerce since we started the category in 2009. In July of 2009, this was the first product that was ever sold on Facebook. It was a, um, a flower cake sold through the 1-800-Flowers fan page. Uh, it's called Slice of Life. And um, that it started a, an amazing amount of excitement in the industry and in the media uh, that kicked off right around then. Because I think up until this point, there had been really no clear way to monetize social media. And what we just showed the retail industry was, here's a really simple thing to do, I think, back then. You know, there's 250 million users on Facebook in 2009. Maybe you should be able to have a store there and sell to them. I think that's where the excitement kind of kicked off. Um, in fact, the topic was, was so covered that over the next 12 months, Facebook commerce and social commerce was covered more than the war in Afghanistan and the Great, great Recession combined by the media. It's true. But I think, I think a, a, a number of industry insiders and a lot of heads of e-commerce took a look at this and thought, well, for the last five years or so, the only thing really innovative that's kind of moved the needle from a revenue point of view has been mobile. And I think a lot of us looked at social as, as potentially the next wave of online growth. Um, in fact, I, I think that um, the only way that e-commerce will become a significant percentage of your total sales if you're a multi-channel retailer is if you reshape how commerce works and make it uh, a lot more about people than it is about products. So I think the future of e-commerce will be shaped around people, not products. For the last three years, 8th Bridge has been on a mission to reshape e-commerce around people. To us, that means that you should be able to shop where you socialize and socialize where you shop. You should be able to easily express how you feel about a product or an offer from a brand with your friends. And then in return, get a more personalized and better and more social experience from that brand. Um, today, Graphite uh, is being released. And Graphite is finally fulfilling on this vision that we had a few years ago. And we're really excited to show it to you. But before we do that, let's talk candidly a little bit about why social commerce hasn't so far put up the kind of numbers that we all hoped it would have from a revenue point of view. So if we go back to that cake again that, that started this whole thing, we sort of started focused on the portability piece of this. We made it possible to shop on Facebook without leaving. So we brought the store out to the customer rather than the other way around. Um, it was a simple concept. It was on the Facebook fan page of 1-800-Flowers. So you could get to it by typing facebook.com slash 1-800-Flowers. And you could browse the category, uh, product categories, add something to your cart and check out. We made the store so portable at one point that would even run on your home page. So if you're a fan of 100 Flowers, you'd get an offer on your home page in the news feed that looked a little bit like a video thumbnail with a play button on it. And if you press play, it would just expand right in place. It would open a store. You could browse the offer, add an item to your cart, and check out. That was, uh, that's kind of where it all started. And you have to ask yourself, why? Like, why would you shop on Facebook when you could easily just go to 100flowers.com as well? And uh, so a lot of these, these early fan page stores didn't produce a lot of revenue. Um, there were a few that did. So um, Hot Look launched an event with us for DVF. Uh, they sold a dozen Diane Von Furstenberg dresses for half off. They blew through a $200,000 worth of sales within, uh, within a day and a half or two days. So shopping does work. Commerce does work on Facebook, but only in certain circumstances. So if you give someone a really big incentive to buy something half off, or you launch a new season of products only on Facebook, or you launch a product that's only available on Facebook. Those types of things have worked really well. But overall, this wasn't really f fulfilling the kind of the vision of social commerce. It was just selling in a social place that didn't make, make shopping social. 2010 started to move us a lot closer to that kind of goal. Um, Delta launched a bookings engine, so it was possible to book your flights on Facebook. It was the ad age app of the year in 2010. 
Uh, their CEO said they got more press from launching their Facebook store than from buying Northwest Airlines. It was a huge PR win, but not that many people have booked their flights on Facebook because why would you? It's, it's really no better than booking it on Delta. Um, so really what Delta was after is creating a better experience. So on top of the Acreage platform, they launched a group travel planning app. This is sort of the killer app in travel, if you think about it. Have you ever planned a trip with your friends or your worst, your family? You know how, how, what a nightmare it is. Right? Where are we staying? What flight are we taking in? When do you get in? Um, what, um, what are we going to do the first night? Who's got the car? All that can now be made easier because you can do it all right on Facebook. You can organize the trip. You can invite your friends that you want to have go with you. And the whole thing gets a little bit easier. And yes, you can book your flights too, but that's not really the point. The point was to create a much better experience for their, for their customers. And I thought Delta did a great job. Uh, Lands End did something with us that was pretty neat uh, a couple years ago as well. They made it possible to create a wish list and then share that with your Facebook friends. So now you can more easily buy me something for my birthday from Facebook. Um, Electronic Arts did some really neat things. So when we launched, when they launched uh, Battlefield 3, they ran a social promotion that gave players uh, an incentive to recruit their friends and go buy the new game. Those are good examples of, of kind of participatory or collaborative or social experiences. And Target last fall launched a Halloween app. It's called Ask Your Friends. And uh, it's exactly what it says. It's really easy to ask your friends which costume you should wear for Halloween. And uh, your friends could vote on it, and you'd get polls that would show up. I was a tie between a creepy sock monkey and a hot dog. <laughs> uh, we even made it possible for sales reps to sell on Facebook. So we unleashed thousands of sales reps on the Facebook. I'm sorry. But it was a classy brand. Mark is a division of Avon. It's great merchandise. They're selling uh, very nice makeup to their friends. So, so uh, you know, thousands of their reps were Facebook users. And they're, they are now able to create stores, create offers, share those with their girlfriends, and let their friends shop without leaving Facebook. Last year, we got very involved with the Facebook engineering team as a beta partner for their new custom open graph technology. And um, we launched our first customer, uh, our beta client, which is Ticketmaster, on Graphite um, late in 2011, early 2012. And uh, it was a very cool timeline app. It let you tell your friends that you wanted to attend a concert. It let you invite your friends to go with you. Um, you could easily tell your friends that you bought tickets to go or ask your friends or tell your friends that you want to go see a band. And, um, and then it would show you what all your friends were up to. So you could see events that you, you and your friends have upcoming. And maybe you didn't know a band was coming to town that a friend of yours uh, just bought tickets for. And it shows up in Facebook for you. So it was a much better social experience for uh, ticketing. But what was really neat about this is we, we also used your social graph data to personalize the experience. So the music that you're listening to on Spotify and RDO and, and iHeartRadio the music and the bands your friends had liked and that they were listening to on those social music services was available to us. Um, and, we made, and we used that data to personalize the experience. So instead of just giving you a list of upcoming concerts in your zip code, we would give you a much more tailored and personalized list of upcoming music and bands that maybe you wouldn't have thought to see otherwise. Um, so it was a very, very cool implementation of, uh, of the custom open graph. In fact, TechCrunch, um, of all of the beta partners that launched, and there were a handful of us that launched on the same night, TechCrunch called our app for Ticketmaster the most impressive one because we were the only ones that actually used that graph data to personalize the experience. Those were just a few examples, but over the years, we worked with dozens and dozens of really, really innovative and well-respected brands. Uh, I could say, hands down, that uh, Eightbridge has far more experience in the social commerce space than anyone else uh, in the market. And the, the number one thing that I could say that we've learned is that people drive social commerce, not brands. So if you go back and you added up all of the shopping activity on Facebook over the last couple of years, almost all of it is friend to friend. It's me inviting you to go to a concert, or me inviting you to go on a trip with me, or me trying to recruit you to join me in the new game. That's where the real value is of social commerce. It's sort of obvious, right? It's word of mouth marketing. That's what the value is. You may have seen this article from Bloomberg. It came out, uh, I think, three months ago or so, maybe two months ago. Uh, it was linked, linked to about 35,000, 45,000 times. So if you didn't see it and you're in the industry, I'd be really surprised. 
you know, the article talked about major retailers that had launched Facebook storefronts and that, and that were now closing them because they didn't see enough revenue from them. And um, I had the uh, pleasure of being quoted as giving F Commerce an F in the article. So we probably should have hired a PR agency before I talked to Bloomberg, <laughs> not after. Um, but it's true. So um, a lot of the early attempts around Facebook commerce or more generally social commerce were focused on selling on fan pages and it just didn't work. Most people didn't even know that you had a store on your fan page, so why would they go there to buy something from you? And, and, and then the experience isn't really any better for a lot of these examples that they gave than what you could have gotten on someone's website. So of course that's not gonna work. Um, but if, if you think back one slide when I said people drive social commerce, the key is to get more people to share you with their friends. And really the fundamental problem that social commerce has had is that the, it's been limited from a distribution point of view. Those people that are seeing your shareable offers and using your social apps are using them on the social media sites. It's a Facebook app on Facebook. But actually, if you added up all of the interactions for your brand, very, very few of those are on Facebook. And very few are inside of a Facebook app. Almost all of your customer interactions and conversations today are in your existing channels. They're in your stores. They're on your e-commerce sites. They're even in your call center. Um, so no wonder we're trying to take that 1% of traffic and convert that into something that delivers a, a, a really good ROI. So that's why social commerce hasn't worked very well so far. There have been some attempts to bring social functionality outside of Facebook, and we'll talk about that in, in a second, but that's really what has to happen. Real social commerce scale requires a, more of an integrated approach than what we've seen so far. Um, you need to be able to integrate social into your existing channels where all those people were into your existing systems that support those channels. So the like button was, I think, the most successful approach towards this. It was really easy. You know, it was a couple lines of code. Um, it was very, uh, there was very little friction in someone clicking a button and expressing how they feel to your friends, to their friends, but it just wasn't very expressive. It wasn't very specific. In fact, at one point I wondered, why do people click the like button on products? So we asked 2,500 Facebook users, why do you like a product? And over half, 57%, said they had already bought the product they had used it, and they liked it. They wanted to tell their friends about it. There was a whole bunch of people that would have expressed themselves about your products and shared with their friends if you gave them something more specific, uh, a, a more specific way to express themselves. So the result was you know, millions of products with zero likes. And what does that tell someone that looks at that product? It's not a good social proof uh, uh, benefit. And the last thing we need are more third-party branded sharing buttons on websites. I think these are taking up enough real estate and enough clutter and they're confusing enough as it is. What is really needed is something that's easy to use as a user, it's expressive, and is brand consistent. So if you're on the Oscar de la Renta website, those sharing features should look and feel like Oscar de la Renta. If you're on the Nasty Gal website, they should look very different than Oscar de la Renta. They should look like Nasty Gal. Can't wait to wear a gimme. There are words and actions um, and the look and feel that, are, that can be very brand consistent and brand customized. Same thing with Guitar Center. Um, those are just a few examples. So that's what's, that's what's needed to really scale up social. So it needs to be multi-channel. It needs to be integrated with your existing system. It's, it's gotta be very easy for someone to engage and express how they feel about your offer. And, and it has to be brand consistent. It has to feel like your brand. And I think a lot of people that are watching this have, have thought, well, I, I know this, and, and I know it needs to be integrated across channels, but it's been a bit, it's a very big project from an IT point of view, and we have other pri competing priorities, and the space is new. We're still in the test and learn phase. So the, the last ingredient that's probably the most important to scaling up social commerce is that it has to be easy. It has to be very lightweight from an IT impact point of view to really uh, scale up social commerce. These five requirements became the core design principles behind Graphite. Graphite is the first social commerce platform built from the ground up to be integrated with those existing channels that you have with the 99% of your existing conversation with the systems that support those. And we've done it so that it's really easy to integrate with your existing systems and channels. We have very large brands activating with Graphite right now, very small brands. Very few of them have taken more than 90 minutes of total programming support from IT to get this live, to get this launched. Soon, there'll be over a billion users on Facebook. 
What Graphite will give a brand is an ability to turn those users into advocates and, and have those users start to share you with their friends. And people will share your brand and will share your products with their friends, uh, not because you're giving them points. They're not going to share because you're giving them rewards. Um, the, you don't have to pay them. And, and the last thing they want is some dorky badge from you on their Facebook profile. Right? The reason people will share you with their friends is the same reason people use Facebook. They want to express who they are, the clothes we wear, the car we drive, um, all, and the music we listen to, for example, all say something about who we are, and that's really what Facebook is all about. And the reason we want to express ourselves to our friends is that we all want to be loved and we all want to belong. So there's this incredible opportunity for social commerce because really it shares the same thing. Again, the reason we shop and the re reason we use Facebook is really the same exact thing. Um, so the, the clothes that we buy from Real Allah say something about who we are. The perfume we wear says something. We travel because we want to belong. We want to be with our friends and we want to be loved. The games we play with our friends after our spouses go to bed till 3 o'clock in the morning really is about being with your friends, not about playing a game. The, the, the games we attend in person rather than watching it on TV are about the same thing. And that's why we go to concerts and don't listen to music just on our iPod. So uh, check out this video and you'll get a better sense of what I mean. Oh, thank you. So they, uh, they lived happily ever after, by the way. <laughs> so uh, it, uh, I think we could summarize graphite and say there are three core capabilities that graphite brings. Uh, the first is the ability to create social expressions in multiple different channels. The second is it enable people to shop without leaving Facebook with shoppable stories. And the third is our interest graph API that makes it possible to integrate this with your existing marketing and e-commerce systems and scale up your opportunity with social commerce. Social expressions um, is, is really what drives the advocacy. It gives someone an ability to more specifically express how they feel about your product. And the brand can decide which actions we call, these are called actions that they like to, to deploy. Maybe love or want or own or wearing or war or listening to or attending. Those are the types of actions that, that a brand can, uh, can add to their existing channels. And it makes it easier for me to express how I feel about your offer to my friends. And, and because it's easier, I'll share more. And more of us will bring a lot more advocacy uh, to your brand and a lot more awareness and buzz on Facebook and will result in more traffic back to your website and, and online sales. Uh, we made it really easy um, for someone to engage. So this is deeply integrated with the Facebook custom open graph. 
and the new timeline that they've released for, for users. Um, so now the, the, the most common use case uh, of Graphite will be to enable your existing website with social actions. So on the product detail page, near the add to bag button, the image of the product, you'll now have a few uh, actions, custom actions for the brand. These look and feel like Fashion Co. The marketer decided what their actions would be. Their creative team designed them to our spec. Uh, and they're added to the website really easily. So now from here, I can tell my friends when I'm shopping that I want that red dress or that I potentially own it. We've made it as easy to implement as the Facebook Like button. So your IT team can implement this in less than 90 minutes. Uh, we can just have you go into the dashboard, into the Graphite dashboard, click Get Embed Code, grab the, a few lines of JavaScript, add those to your site, test it, and you're done. It's really, really easy to implement. Uh, we've also designed it so that the business person controls this. It's not an IT tool. It's a tool for the marketer, the e-commerce ops manager. So it's much easier uh, for you to control the data. You can create actions, manage the actions in the creative. And, and I'll show you how easy it is to create an action in a minute. Uh, but the data is an important one. When a customer says that she wants a dress from you to Facebook, that's being posted to the open graph. And the challenge with the open graph is that it's open. So you should think of it as sort of a public graph. There are things that you might not want to share publicly, um, maybe inventory information or pricing or a, or, a, or a special promotion that you don't want everyone to be able to see. Those are all things that you can control with Graphite. You can decide what you want to share with the open graph and what you want to kind of keep private within Graphite. Now, the actions in the creative are really easy to manage. So a marketer or an e-commerce ops manager would log in, in this case, go to the romantic dresses product category and add a love action um, to that category. And then log into the creative plugins manager. Say I'm going to upload some creative for the love button. Pick, pick that creative, and you've got different states like hover or selected or unselected that you can display to a user and add all that right uh, within the dashboard. Um, so there's not a need to create a small IT project to make these changes. You don't have to call anyone to make these changes. The marketer or the ops manager can just do that right inside Graphite. We've also um, implemented a reporting suite, so we give uh, the user some great insights into what's happening um, from a high level of earned media, how, you know, how much traffic is being driven from these social actions back to my website, down to which products are more viral and shareable than others, to which actions have produced more interactions, does the favorite button work better than the love button for dresses, um, you can have different actions associated with different product categories. Obviously, the actions for furniture would look different than the actions for fashion if, uh, if you sell both. And so all that insight is made available to the marketer, and it's really easy to use to see what's going on. And you can use this to A-B test things and maximize the opportunity. So maybe we should be using favorite for dresses and not love, for example. The second core capability is, is something I think is really cool, which is something we've, we've called shoppable stories. When when someone says, I want this product, and we share that to Facebook, we don't share just a link. We actually share a shoppable store. And it enables someone to shop that story on Facebook without actually leaving Facebook. So um, it shows up like this in the news feed. It shows up in the ticker. It shows up in the timeline uh, when you share this to Facebook. And now it's this interactive, um, brand consistent, shoppable story right in the middle of Facebook's homepage. So, um, so Fashion Co. can decide uh, and control that brand experience, that rich shopping experience, right inside Facebook. And from a user point of view, I'd much rather just hit play and expand this and check out what it is that was shared to me uh, versus clicking a link, because a link means leaving. And a lot of people don't want to leave the Facebook experience, so don't make them. Um, in fact, the shoppable stories drive about an 18x lift in interaction rates or click rates versus sharing a link. Because again, we all know what a link does. It means we have to leave Facebook. Uh, brand marketers love this because it's a really rich, controlled brand experience now uh, inside Facebook. We also make it really easy to change that creative. So you can log into the dashboard, um, open up the shoppable stories 
uh, area and upload some different creative if you wanted to try something other than what's on the screen now. And again, this is something that the business user can configure and we, it's not an IT project. So we're changing the header from Fashion Co. in this example to Fashion Co. get 15% off. Those are the types of things that you could do with banners and other, and other creative. The third component of Graphite is really important. It's called the Interest Graph API. And the API is what allows you to scale this up with, exi with other existing systems. So if you wanted to integrate this interest graph data, the information that you know about that someone wanted this item or they, or they love this item or they already own this item, that's all relevant insight and very useful to use in your existing marketing e-commerce systems. And what, with that information, you can create a better experience that's more social in each channel that you have and personalize those. I think the two most common use cases right now for the interest graph API are around email and product recommendations. So in email, uh, through the Interest Graph API, we could trigger an email to someone that wanted an item. So if Melissa wanted, she, she clicked want on your website and said, I want this red dress. When it goes on sale, send it to her. So we can automatically trigger an email out uh, to Melissa to let her know that that item she wanted is now on sale. The other one is product recommendations. So the product recommendations engine that you use now can be made smarter by give, giving it interest graph data. So if, again, if I wanted those skinny jeans uh, and I'm on your website, then shouldn't those skinny jeans show up in a recommended products pane? Absolutely, it should. So that's, that's your quick intro uh, to Graphite. Now I'd like to introduce a few of the key players behind the product. We've got some amazing, brilliant people on the team, and I'd like you to meet just a couple of them now. What the new Graphite platform brings is a friend-to-friend, -friend, scalable, repeatable process that's lights out. And more importantly, this is going to be friend-to-friend -friend sharing at the long-tail product level. A lot of social commerce strategies today focus on trying to give people deals or giving them badges or making a game out of it. People share on Facebook because they want to express who they are. Oftentimes, expressing what you own and sharing what you own or what you aspire to own can often express who you are better than your own words can. Brands have been very reluctant to allow users to really express themselves. What the Graphite platform brings are two very important things. Not only is the user interface for the actions consistent with the brand message, but the vocabulary of each one of those verbs can be tailored to the company and really communicate the brand feel and mimic what their advocates like to express about that brand. We wanted to build something that a marketer could add their actions, design the creative around it, A-B test it. If they want those changes to go live, it's as simple as deploying it out to production. With Graphite, you won't need to call IT anymore. We built Graphite to make sure that it was really easy for the merchant to deploy and put on their website. A simple few lines of JavaScript code added to your product pages and you're able to add social commerce actions to your site. No merchant should take lightly a request to just add more code to their product pages. Keeping your product pages light and easy and fast is really important. When we designed Graphite, we made sure that we used the most advanced techniques possible to load that plugin asynchronously in a way that would never cause your page to slow down at all. To do that, we created a suite of plugins that the web developer or the marketing manager in that organization can use to create social actions and then put those on a product page. And now, when your friends visit your timeline, they're gonna be able to see all of the items that you've wanted, maybe that you've loved, maybe that you've actually marked and, and shared with your friends that you own. When this share occurs, Graphite has um, something that we call a shoppable story, which is actually a mini catalog that will open up in timeline, ticker, and newsfeed. And this allows us to show products personalized to that share, and it's almost a brand new channel for the retailer. We made this very flexible and easy for the marketer to change and experiment with social commerce, but it's a very easy integration for IT so if you've added a Facebook like button, a tweet button, any other Google Analytics, you have already done the exact same amount of work that it takes to add the Graphite plugin. 
Many people have avoided doing social projects because they know that APIs can change at a moment's notice and things require constant maintenance. We made sure that we wouldn't require any kind of complicated data transfers or catalog exports. The way that we add data to the Graphite database is a process we call hydration. Hydration can happen in many ways. The easiest way is having open graph tags on your page already. You have a title, a description, and an image. That's product data. We'll read it, and you're done. This allows our merchant partners to go live very quickly and create a very durable product for the long term. The Graphite platform is going to enable a whole new strategy on how we market in this day of social integration. We have analytics for every step of this earned media funnel, from how many people see actions, to how many people take actions, to how many of those actions actually get into a Facebook news feed, and then finally the click back to the site. And we believe that this true trackability of this earned media funnel is one of the things that will really bring ROI into social commerce.